Salutary neglect during the 17th to 18th centuries in the British North American colonies was a large contributing factor that led to the American Revolutionary War. It was a policy that increased tensions between the homeland of Great Britain and its North American colonies, who grew disdainful of Britain's encroachment upon their autonomy and livelihoods, leading to a bloody secession from Britain by the colonists in order to obtain their own liberties and freedom from British rule, which had began to feel oppressive by the estranged ruling country. Since the imperial authority did not assert the power that it had, the colonists were left to govern themselves. These essentially sovereign colonies soon became accustomed to the idea of self-control. The effects of such prolonged isolation eventually resulted in the emergence of a collective identity that considered itself separate from Great Britain. The term salutary neglect arises from Edmund Burke's speech for conciliation with the colonies given in the British House of Commons March 22nd of 1775, where he states, quote, that I know that the colonies in general owe little or nothing to any care of ours, and that they are not squeezed into this happy form by the constraints of watchful and suspicious government, but that through a wise and salutary neglect, a generous nature has been suffered to take her own way to perfection. When I reflect upon these effects, I see how profitable they have been to us. I feel the pride of power sink, and all presumption in the wisdom of human contrivances melt and die away with me. In the countries of the large European powers, namely England, France, Spain, Portugal, Italy, Germany, and the Netherlands, mercantilism existed as the main economic system between the 16th and 19th centuries. Mercantilism was a state-driven system in which a country would attempt to become as autonomous as possible, producing their own goods and finding means of procuring the natural resources needed to fuel their economy. In using the mercantilist system, wealth would be prevented from flowing out of the country as much as possible because of this autonomy. Circulating around the wealth and resources while also exporting to other nations in order to continuously stimulate the economy with money while importing as little as possible. The workings of mercantilism made the existence of colonies for a mother country very profitable, as the homeland could simply leach the abundant raw materials from the colonies, fueling manufacturing in the homeland and then further stimulating the economy by providing new markets where manufactured goods were needed and the homeland could sell to. Now what was salutary neglect? Salutary neglect was a period of time lasting from the early 1600s to mid-1700s regarding the North American colonies, under which trade regulations and an unofficial policy initiated by Prime Minister Robert Waxpole for the colonies were laxly enforced. By Britain, an oversight of international affairs was loose as long as the colonies remained loyal to the British government and contributed to the economic profitability of Britain. Salutary neglect involuntarily contributed to the increasing autonomy of colonial legal and legislative institutions, which ultimately led to the American secession from Britain in the 18th century. The turning point from salutary neglect to an attempt to enforce British policies was the Seven Years' War, and more locally, the French and Indian War. Great Britain was fighting France for imperial control of the known world, including North America, where the war was started, in which Great Britain was in a disadvantageous position, losing to the French until Secretary of State William Pitt took charge. To help the war effort, Pitt tried to seize supplies from the colonies, force colonial men into service, and take control of military issues. The colonists strongly resented his interference, and soon Pitt eased his policies. Nevertheless, the Seven Years' War fostered resentment in the American colonies toward the British and contempt in Britain toward the Americans. These tensions caused Britain to abandon its policy of salutary neglect when the British made the decision to reinforce trade restrictions and regulations and placed taxes on the colonies in order to recuperate the cost of the Seven Years' War, since Britain was in massive debt. In the mid-1700s, they attempted to balance trade and exploit natural resources from the North American colonies, which also served as a market for British manufactured goods, causing the British government to adopt the Navigation Acts. Under the Navigation Act of 1651, all products exported to Britain or its colonies were required to be transported on British vessels or on ships from the country that the goods originated from. The Navigation Act prevented a competitor of Britain's maritime trade the Dutch from continuing to freely act as middlemen 
and transnational commerce with the British colonies, especially of commodities originating in Africa or Asia. Subsequent acts required that all goods bound for England or British colonies, regardless of origin, had to be shipped on British vessels, and that certain enumerated articles from the colonies, which came to include sugar, cotton, and tobacco, could only be shipped to England, with trade in those items in other countries prohibited. Ultimately, all goods from other countries bound for the colonies, or goods from the colonies destined for other countries, had to first pass through British ports, where they were subject to customs duties. Those duties have elevated the price of non-British goods so that they were prohibitively expensive for the colonists. Vice Admiralty Courts, presided over by judges but lacking juries, which were viewed as overly sympathetic to colonial interests, were established in the colonies to address violations of trade regulations. In 1696, the British Parliament established the Board of Trade largely with the intention of maintaining even tighter control of colonial trade. Because of England's economic good fortune and absence within the U.S., many colonies ended up governing themselves by establishing a British-type culture, with a distinct American change to it. Britain at the time was still under the mercantilist economic system, which caused them to be heavily dependent on the colonies for their resources and raw materials. Once salutary neglect came into play, both itself and mercantilism assisted each other in helping American and Britain economically. This, in turn, caused colonial merchants to be able to become very successful in their growth within the developing economy. Salutary neglect contributed to the prosperity of the American colonies, but Britain also enjoyed the fruits of that prosperity. What Britain did not understand was that the colonies had not only gained a semblance of economic independence, but also political independence. The idea of salutary neglect was not a cause of the American Revolution or the War for Independence. The cause was the reversal of the policy and the attempts by Parliament, the Ministry, and the Crown to, to impose the will of Britain on the colonies. Prior to the French and Indian War, Americans simply ignored most of the laws and Britain had no means of enforcing them. After the war, Britain decided to reverse the policy and start enforcing the Navigation Acts and new laws and then trouble began. The independent political and economic nature of Americans came to the forefront. At first, they resisted with pamphlets and letters, which helped to develop the idea of the American Revolution. However, as Britain continued to press the issue and assert its authority by sending troops to the colonies, the Americans resented how they were being treated. In turn, the troops that were sent to America resented the colonists for how they were treated especially when colonial legislatures refused to provide funds for food and housing. Eventually, the resentment led to fighting between soldiers and colonists that resulted in riots at the Battle of Golden Hill in New York City and the death of five colonists in the Boston Massacre. These incidents and others made it clear to the colonists that British officials and soldiers were ready and willing to use violence to bend them to their will. Although tensions eased somewhat after the Boston Massacre, they rose again when Parliament passed the Tea Act and gave the British East Inca India Company a monopoly on the selling of tea in the colonies. The Sons of Liberty in Boston responded by throwing roughly 340 chests of tea into the harbor during the Boston Tea Party. By then, Parliament was fed up with Boston's contentious nature and coercive acts were passed to punish Boston and the Massachusetts Bay Colony for its behavior. Within a year of implementing the coercive acts, fighting between British regulars and American militiamen broke out at Lexington Green on the morning of April 19, 1775. The various impacts that came due to the end of salutary neglect were significant factors in contributing to the beginning of the American Revolution, such as the coercive acts, tea acts, and navigation acts. Salutary neglect's end also brought about the end of the system of mercantilism in America and also hampered the relationship between the colonies and Britain.